Thank you, Susan. <laughs> you know, I made this statement that um, I don't think romance writers take themselves too seriously in the giggle tears. <laughs> <laughs> We take our careers very seriously. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Fun, right? They take their research and their writing and their audiences very seriously. They are very committed writers. And one of the things that I have learned that you may not expect from reading either Susan's book or Leanne's book or a number of the other authors is about history. Because they don't just make the, the time period up. The stories are made up. But to be a really good novel and a really good story, the time period must be authentic. It must be true to fact in that way. So when I thought about both talking about the period you're writing in and how much research you do, people need to be aware that they're going to learn their history <laughs> through your books as well as enjoy a terrific story. And yes, you have fun, but you're serious, dedicated writers. So I kind of misspoke, and I didn't mean it that way, because from my heart, I have learned so much history from fiction that is amazing. I never would have learned a history book. Like <laughs> so just give all the good parts of the history book. Yeah. They do because they don't deal with the the matters of the heart, and that is really what life is about. But we're now going to move on to not the historical. Well, um, but so you're going to, what are you going to be reading from today? I'm going to be reading from uh, numerous road trip books that I'm looking at. Oh, okay. New stuff. New stuff. Ooh. New stuff. Well, from the uh, sublime to ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> what accent are you going to use? <laughs> you don't want to know. Because I don't do it. Uh, I'd have to get my husband. It, look, it, this is not your favorite thing to do, read, right? No, not really. Okay. <laughs> well, I like reading, it's not <laughs> Right, and I agree with you totally. Uh, but we're going to have the, the privilege and the pleasure of hearing Elisa Hendricks read a bit to us uh, from a piece that she's working on, a new new novel. Mm -hmm. um, but Elisa is, um, Elisa is from Central Ohio. Uh, her specialty is romance novels with a paranormal bent, but I think we're looking at something new today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, her recent titles include Star Raiders, The Sword, The Pen, and Star Crash. Uh, do we have a little bit of futuristic in this? Star Crash and Star Raiders are futuristic. That's what I. That's what I was referring. The sword to. and the Pen is actually. Um, Contemporary fantasy. All right. So with that, uh, I introduce Elisa and uh, look forward to hearing from your new work. <laughs> and forgive me if I mispronounce words. Even though I wrote them, I can't always read them. I've written historical. I wrote a Western historical. Um, I would never attempt to write anything about England because that's way too much research. <laughs> Recent, I, I was. I had enough to do. I just researched the Comanche Indians, you know. That was easy. See, I knew nothing of that. <laughs> it yeah. terrified me. And I then know. I decided that even that was too much research, so I decided to make up my own universe. <laughs> I went about 500 years in the future uh, and wrote Star Crash, which was originally going to be a short, erotic story. I wanted to see how long I could keep my characters naked. <laughs> so now it's a long, erotic story. <laughs> <laughs> and I entered it in a contest. And they liked it and um, wanted to see the rest of it. And I had to write 50,000 words in about two months. <laughs> Never have done that again. Never will do that again. Uh, I call Star Crash my Planet of the Apes meets Star Trek. <laughs> and then I went on and I wrote a 
fantasy, which I call the sword of Pan, which I call um, Zena the Warrior Princess Meets Stranger Fiction. <laughs> and then I went on to do another, went back to my um, universe in the stars, and I wrote Star Raiders, which is Pirates of the Caribbean Meets Star Wars. The book I'm going to read to you for right now is completed and is sitting at an agent waiting to see if they want to take us on because it's a collaboration with another author who's crazier than I am. Um, it's called Grannies and Trannies, Vegas or Bust. <laughs> <laughs> Grannies and Trannies, Vegas or Bust. <laughs> and basically, it's the Golden Girls meets the Birdcage, a road trip to Las Vegas to rescue friends and mom. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Actually, this is the start of chapter two, which we are seriously considering making chapter one. Even though we love chapter one, which is titled Hearing Aids and Blowjobs, um, <laughs> we decided that uh, chapter two, Vegas or Bust, uh, really gives a flavor of the story more than chapter one. <laughs> chapter one, or chapter two, Vegas or Bust. <coughs> the words printed in pink lipstick on the back of a fast food tray weren't what caught B.J. Wilkins' eye. Not at first, anyway. It was the sight of the two old lady old women sitting on the curb in front of a ramshackle truck stop that had seen better days and much better patrons. The ladies were as out of place in this rural Midwest American garden spot as hell. And the group of the rough and the fan can't read. And the group of rough truckers whispering and pointing at the old woman knew it. Bad idea, boss, Teddy warned from his perch behind the wheel of a big school bus. He gestured a stumpy arm at the truckers. Don't go all KSA on me. Look at the size of those guys. KSI is my line, line informed Teddy. Don't be stealing my lines, Minnie Elvis. Turn around. We need gas, BJ insisted, ignoring Liza. Teddy was right, of course. BJ was no knight in shining armor, no matter what Liza wanted to believe. A shining tutu, maybe, and a tarnished one at that. It was a dreadful idea to get involved, but BJ had a gut feeling it was the right thing to do. Years of ignoring his gut had never done him any good which is why he lived by a code to always follow his heart. Right now, he had a feeling, follow, feeling his heart was sitting on that curb. If he didn't stop, he'd never be able to live with himself. Those women had no clue how much trouble they could get themselves in being alone in a place like this. Yeah, turn around, Liza chimed in. I gotta drain the snake. I told you not to get the big gulp, Camp said, with her natural long black hair. When she was in costume, she was a dead ringer for the singer she did best, Cher. Well, except for the fact that she could born a man. With those new breasts, she might be thinking about changing that in the near future. BJ wasn't sure. Liza gave the older woman a head bob straight out of the ghetto she had probably never seen. Um, I was thirsty after singing all night. I need to keep my vocal cords hydrated for the audition. And it's none of your flipping business how much pop I drink. Just use the toilet of the bus, Charles suggested from the security corner in the back. Liza screwed up her face in disgust at the Tina Turner wannabe. Yeah, no way. No, I ain't letting you dykes fill up the turd toad with your crap, Teddy shouted. Don't blow your old ring, Teddy Camp snapped. After the girls, including BJ, had refused to empty the sewage containers on the bus's bathroom, Teddy told them he would drive to Vegas, but the facilities were off limits. Girls, BJ reprimanded. With a stern look at Teddy, he pointed to the truck stop with more determination. Your funeral, Teddy grumbled, but spun the huge wheel of the ancient school bus. The gears ground and the brakes squealed as he stomped on the extender strapped to the pedals. Teddy was a little person, but he handled the big bus as if he were average size. He did an illegal U-turn and then bounced over the uneven gravel lot. The moment they came to a shutter and stopped outside the ramshackle truck stop, Liza raced the door and leapt out of the bus like a gazelle, which was quite a feat considering she had on five-inch stilettos. Liza, get your skinny ass back here. The real note of panic in Cam's voice disturbed BJ more than anything else up to this point. A nervous Cam was not a good sign. BJ hastened after Liza. A girl was beautiful, no doubt about it, but she was way too naive about the cruelty of the world. If she were in street clothes, she probably would have passed for a woman unless she was still being lazy and doing the European thing by not shaving her tits. But no natural born woman wore a pink sequined even gown at 10 in the morning with stuck full stage makeup. <laughs> B.J. looked from Liza's long blonde lips to the old women. The women noticed their outlandish appearances immediately, but they seemed oblivious to the danger they were in from the truckers. The question was, who should be rescued first? Heedless of the huge addition Liza had just added to their growing list of problems, she shashayed into the building. The three narrowly truckers smoking by their big ribs were suddenly more interested in her than the old ladies. 
Chetty jumped off a seat and clambered down the bus steps effortlessly, effortlessly, though they were way too tall for someone of their small stature. He and BJ shared a look before he howled her into the bus. Charles, you're going to have to pump gas. We've got a situation brewing out here. Are you on crack? Not in this miniskirt and not in this lifetime, the black men. The black men lived at one lack of brow. Teddy sighed. I have to do everything myself, don't I? The truckers had tossed their smokes aside and advanced on the building, trouble gleaming in their eyes even from this distance. BJ's gut clenched. He should have known this place wasn't going to throw out the welcome after people like them. Folks seldom did. Teddy took charge and pointed at the two ladies. We'll see if they're okay. I'll take care of Liza. Damn girl ain't got no sense. She's probably in the women's room kissing, standing up. BJ had been protected with Liza since she started working at Eva Donna's and he first met her. But he wasn't sure what hold she had on Teddy. Would he just holler at her or would he actually stick his neck out and defend her if he need, need be? Teddy was sometimes part of her act at Eva Donna's, but he wasn't the sort to give a damn about people. Most of the time he was barely civil, except when he was getting his drink on. Then he could be downright sweet. Teddy, wait, BJ Carson. I don't think that's such a good idea. Correct that, Charlie popped his head and winked head out the bus school bus window. Sending a midget Elvis impersonator after a drag queen in a woman's bathroom constitutes a terrible idea. <laughs> About as terrible as an idea as those shoes you're wearing, Charles came at it. The two on the bus started arguing, but BJ turned them out. It was just their way. He reached down to stop Teddy, Teddy but the mini Elvis was agile and easily avoided his gas, grasp. At the entrance of the building, he turned back and flashed his crooked teeth. Two trannies, two trannies in a woman's bathroom as truck was hot on the trail. Even worse idea, Bet, he said, reminding BJ he was still in costume. I can fly, fly under the radar, or at least under the stall door. You stick out like a zebra at a camel race. 